friends, welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Look at all these wonderful drops. Uh, welcome to part two of Build a Full Stack Travel Log. Um, in this episode, we're going to deploy the application so all the people of the world can use it and see it. Um, if you're not familiar uh, with this, just search my channel for a video with a very similar title. That was part one where we built it. Uh, and if you go to my GitHub, github.com slash coding garden, um, there is this uh, repo called Travelog, and this is what we're going to be working on today. Um, ultimately, we're just going to take this app and put it on the interwebs. That's the plan. Let's say hello to everyone. Hello, Josh. Hello, Chad. Yep, it's a midday stream. I'm on my lunch break. <laughs> this won't be a long one. Um, but yeah. And hello, Jesus. Hello, GameStep. Hello, Austin. Hello, Valter. Hello, Ronnie. What's up, ATD? Hello, Muhammad. <laughs> these uh, these little, little emotes are great. I like it. Uh, hello, Sultan. And hello, Stefan, who says, love the channel. Thank you, Stefan. Hello, uh, Isfan. And Fullflex says, can't watch now, have to train, but I'll be back for more uh, awesomeness. The previous episode was majestic. Thank you, Fullflex. Hello, Zoe Grimes. Hello, Ben. Hello, Matar. Hello, Clink. Hello, yes, sir. Hello, Ishan. Uh, we're doing good. We're, we're going to deploy this thing. We might have issues deploying the database. I have not, I don't think I've successfully deployed a Mongo database to MongoDB Atlas live on stream. So that'll be fun to watch. <laughs> and hello, Shaggy. What's up? Uh, hello, I'm a hot grill. Welcome. Uh, Adam just ate a sandwich. They're ready to go. That's great. <laughs> and what's up, Win3200 Day? Welcome to the show. Hello, Joel. Uh, hello, uh, Somak from India. Nice. Hello, Julian. Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh, uh, hello, uh, newbie. Newbie? Welcome. <laughs> Ectoplasm says, I guess will be, this will be the first thing I watch tomorrow morning from Serbia. Nice. Get some rest. I actually don't know what time it is there, but yeah, get some rest. Yeah, you as well, Ashwin. Get some rest. <laughs> See you later. Uh, and hello, Jorge. And hello, Diogo. Welcome to the show. All right. So uh, first, let's just start this app up so we can see what it does. So we have a server. And there's my break timer. We're just getting started, but let's take a quick stretch. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, um, so we have our server. This is a Node.js backend server, and this is where all of our travel log locations are stored. So that's an API. That's great. And then we also have a React app in the client folder that uh, gets all of the locations from the backend and then shows them on a Mapbox map. So we'll show that now. Here it is. So we got a nice little map. We got some markers on the map. If we zoom in, we can see information about a particular location. <laughs> um, and there is a bug where the the location icons are showing through this modal, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. We're just going to put this thing on the internet. Um, and the thing about this application is it's not really an application where anybody can add their visited locations to it. It's really meant for just like one person, at least right now. Like in the future, we could potentially add login and then every person gets their own map of locations, but that's much too complicated for what we got going on right now. Um, so I think the first thing I wanna do before I deploy is make it so that uh, you have to enter a password in order to add a location. So to add a location, uh, let's say we go to Houston, Texas. We're gonna go to Houston. Uh, you can double click on the map that adds a point and then you can enter in all your details. So um, where did we go in Houston? I don't know, we'll just say we visited Houston. It was really hot. <laughs> um, no image. And then the day we visited it was in, wait, how do I go back to years? Oh, well, January 1st. There we go. So once you create the entry, it's there, and then you can click on it, and you can see that. But when I put this on the internet, I don't want anyone to just add their own locations because this is my location log. So we're going to add a password to the, uh, the, to the back end. I think that's the first step. And it's not going to be a full login system. It's just going to be a password that only you know, and uh, it will be verified when adding new entries. So we're going to do that first. Oh, uh, yeah, Clink has a good question. Are we going to deploy to Now or Netlify, and um, am I going to deploy uh, to a server? Yeah. So... Um, we're going to deploy the front end. I was thinking now we could probably do Netlify and then the back end either has to be on now or Heroku. That's the easiest thing that I can get done within an hour. And then our database will probably be on MongoDB Atlas. Though if it doesn't work there, I have a backup plan. And hello, Mark. Hello, Anand. Hello, Permajit. Uh, yes, sir says watching from Kenya. Very nice. <laughs> That's awesome. 
<laughs> and Kun Chris crash lands into the stream. What's up? Hello. <laughs> hello, Lakavka. Lekav Welcome. And hello, Mark. I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Ishwan says, there are two perfect teachers. I know first is Schiffman and the second is you, CJ. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I am honored to be put on the same level as uh, Daniel Schiffman, the coding train. And hello, Exino. Welcome. Oh, nice. Yeah, Etz was just watching the Twitter API proxy one we did a few few days ago, or maybe a week ago. I don't know. I haven't streamed. This is why I'm trying to do a lunch stream. It'll all get better soon, hopefully. <laughs> and hello, Ed. Welcome. Uh, Joss says, could you just change the Z index of the pinpoint? Pro probably, because it, um, it is just CSS image. So I'll hold on to that comment. And hello, Etz. <laughs> hello, Hanan. <laughs> And hello, Sergio, just passing by. Well, thank you for passing by and saying hello, hello, hello. Hello, Domenico. Oh, thank you, Sergio. <laughs> and hello, Levi from Finland. That's great. Yeah, so hopefully we'll get this thing deployed. Uh, my name is not Daniel, no. <laughs> and hello, Mark from Lebanon. That's pretty nice. Uh, Hanan is up very early. Hopefully I didn't wake you with my live notification. <laughs> uh, but welcome, Hanan. Okay, so first step, back in code. Let's try to put a password on this thing. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking in our .env file, we just have a hard-coded password. Now, let it be known, this is not a good way to secure things. I'm just gonna do this right now for like a very basic uh, security of the application. Um, so here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put uh, an environment variable called like password. Um, and when I deploy, I'll be able to set that environment variable secretly on wherever we deploy. So. Um, so we have that. And Sergio has a suggestion to run them both at the same time. I'm not going to do that, but um, it is possible to do that. That's a good, that's a good point. Um, so we have this thing in our .env called password. Um, and I don't think, yeah, there's nothing secret in here in our regular .env right now. So we're going to add it uh, in there as well. And what we'll do is anytime someone tries to create an entry, we're going to make sure that the password matches the, um, the environment variable. We could call this password. Actually, let's call this API key. Just, just to be, just to be clear, like this isn't a hashed password or anything like that. We're gonna call this API key. Cool. And so now what we'll do is in our route for creating um, here. So this post route is where we create a new log entry. We're gonna check to see if a header matches that API key. So first, let's just bring in the API key. Um, so we can say API key. We're going to destructure that from um, process.env. So this will get read in because in our uh, index.js, we're bringing in our environment variables. So when this thing loads, it should already be there. So we have our API key. And then we need, we need to just check it. So um, we'll say right here in the post, um, we will say uh, if request.get, so this allows you to get a header, and we're gonna add a header called X API key. Might have to do it lowercase, we'll see. But if that is equal to API key, we'll do this. If it's not equal to the API key, then you sent a wrong thing and we're gonna throw an error. So I'm doing this inside of the, tr the try, so that way if I throw an error, uh, it'll automatically go to the error handler. So I'm gonna say uh, throw new error unauthorized. Um, and so this is just a simple little check to see if there is a header that has this API key. And right now the API key should be keyboard cat. Okay, so we did that for our backend. Um, let's restart it um, here. Actually, I'm gonna kill it just to make sure that it reads in the latest value of the environment variable. And hello, Hanan, I've been coding for over 15 years. <laughs> Um, I've been streaming for close to two years. Probably, it's probably, it's close to two years. Yeah, uh, the backend is Node.js. And thanks for the follow, Zero. Bongo cat. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you test now, it should successfully fail. You're exactly, you're exactly right, Kun Chris. So if we go to the, the React app, um, and we try to add a new point, we should get, um, I don't know if I'm logging the error. We should see some API error when I try to add a new thing. Um, so title, test, test, and then visit date just today. Create entry. There we go. So it gets a 500 internal server error. 
Um, and if we look at the network tab, we should see unauthorized. Nice. So one thing I'll do really quick is I'll set the status code before we do that. So I'll say res.status 401. Um, and now the, instead of the status code being 500, it should be a 401. So let's try to do that again. Test, test. We're gonna go today, create entry. So now it is a 401 unauthorized error and we get back the message unauthorized, cool. So uh, in the front end, I'm just gonna handle that. So um, in our client code, when, uh, in that form for submitting a new entry, we're gonna catch that error. Um, so uh, create log entry, calls the API, this should catch the error. We're then logging the error. We're setting the error and we're setting loading to false. Oh, uh, let's see, create log entry. Yeah, so this should catch the error. And it shouldn't, wait, where'd we go? What happened? <laughs> that was the client code. Um, it shouldn't actually close the dialog. It should stay open, but I do wanna show an error, yeah? Because if there's an error, show the error here. Um, Set loading true, and then we don't call close when there is a catch. All right. Yeah, it's React. <laughs> let's try again. So uh, we try to add something. Test. Well, let's open the um, dev tools. Test. Test. Entry was created today. Go. Yeah, I'm curious why it's not catching it. We are doing a wait. Oh, because it's a fetch. <laughs> yeah, so a fetch doesn't automatically throw an error. Uh, we can handle that. Um, let's call it. So we're going to store JSON in a variable, and we'll say uh, if response.ok, um, then we'll just return that JSON. But if response was not OK, we need to throw an error. So we're going to throw a new error. Let's do this. Create an error object. Um, and then we'll put in uh, json.message as the error message, and we'll attach that JSON to the uh, error response. We'll say error.response equals that JSON, and then we'll throw that error. So um, if you're familiar, familiar with Axios, it kind of does this. Whenever uh, a, an Axios request throws an error, um, if you look at the error object, there's a response on it that is the actual parsed response. So that's what we're doing here. So now this should throw an error because response is not okay. And then it'll go into the catch. Oh, sorry, not here. <laughs> I'm getting confused with my client and server code in my, this, my log entry. So now error.message should be there. Okay, here we go. Let's try again. Try to add something. Test today. Okay, so uh, that seemed to work. We're actually logging that entry now, or sorry, logging that error now, but the error isn't making it through. Set error with error.message. Error is here. Let's look in the DOM. Yeah, so the form is there, and this should appear right at the top of the form. H3, class name equals error. Do we have like an error class? Yeah, error class color is red. <laughs> CJ unplugged. Oh, I need to await, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, await, um, await this right here, because that, that does return a promise. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta look at the chat. <laughs> um, uh, my, my battery is charging, it just doesn't show it, but it is charging. Uh, would I recommend Hir Heroku for portfolio projects even though it takes some time to load? Um, you, I would say if, if you're looking for jobs, just pay the $7 a month or whatever it is to make sure that that instance is always running. That way you don't have to wait for it to load. Um, but it, it's okay. I know, I know a lot of students that I used to have that deployed their projects to Heroku. And hello, Infi. Yeah, there was a, there was a part one. <laughs> Um, yeah, my stream schedule is not set in stone. Yeah. 
Uh, make the initial request when the page loads and hide the pop-up if it's, if it's a 401. We could do that. We could basically just not allow them to add an entry if they don't have an API key set. But what I want to do is, the, in the form, I want to add uh, an API key, so a place where you can put the API key. Angular 9 is out today, so that's cool. <laughs> uh, see you later, Sergio. Thanks for dropping by. And yeah, I forgot to await this, so that's why it was broke. Yeah. CJ unplugged. Hello, is this Skyrim? <laughs> Yeah, and hello, Anwar. Welcome. Hello, Hazrat. Thanks for the love. Oi! <laughs> All right, Anwar, see you later. And thanks for the follow, Steampunk Devil. Uh, Anwar says, I'm learning the mean stack, and I hope to learn a lot from you. Well, I hope I hope you learn a lot, too. Feel free to ask questions if you have them. And thanks for the follow, Misht. Welcome to the show. What? Greater than 100? <laughs> oh, somebody got 100 on the leaderboard. Great work. <laughs> You're the first. Great work. <laughs> uh, we're not going to add auth today. No, today's going to be a simple deployment with a simple API key. Uh, which would I recommend, mean or Merg? It, it's up to you. It, whether you want to learn React or Angular, it's up to you. It's a miracle. <laughs> okay, so this should work now. I think we should see the errors. Yeah, it is. That's, I never, I never thought this would happen. 100. Wow. So this should fail. Yeah, and then it says unauthorized. Cool. So hello, evil Pisces. Welcome. Uh, <laughs> Dimbersic says feeling great. You should. This is a this is a great a great accomplishment. Um, awesome. So now that we have uh, unauthorized on there, um, we should allow the user to put their API key in the form. So we're gonna do that here. So the name, let's take a quick stretch. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, this is this is a, a historic day for the coding garden. Uh, let's call it API underscore key. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, this is gonna be required and we'll call this API key. Um, we could say type equals password. That way it, it hides it whenever they're entering it in. Um, and then whenever we submit it, um, we'll create log entry. And then in our API, we'll do this. We will say um, API key is entry dot API key. Let's do it like that call it instead of um, camel case. Where are we? We are here. So the name here is API key. API key. <laughs> um, and hello, light year away. Yeah. My brain is a JavaScript framework. Yeah. And hello, hello, hello. <laughs> well, thank you, evil Pisces. And thanks for the follow uh, RV cod. Welcome. And hello, agent key. What's up? What's up, Joe Mama? <laughs> Uh, okay, so we have our API key there. It should make it to this file. We're going to store that in a variable, and then we're going to add it to the headers. So right here, I'm going to say uh, x API key uh, is equal to that value. Um, and I'll actually delete it from the entry, because I don't, I don't want the body of the request to have the API key in it, because then the validation will fail, because it's an extra property. But I do want that API key to be in the header. So now that we've done that, it should work. <laughs> so let's try. Uh, where do we want to go next? Um, let's go to Seattle. API key. Should, trademark. <laughs> Hello, May. Uh, we're not doing validation. I'm just adding a simple API key so that I can deploy it. Uh, well, no. Seattle. I went in the summer. There was very little rain. Um, and then no image. And how do I change the year on this thing? Oh, I just scroll. OK, we're going summer of 2016. Create entry, and then it 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 should work. 
There's the info, and if I refresh the, refresh the page, um, it's still there. So now you must have an API key to submit something. Great. Let's do the deployment. Um, honestly, first thing is we we actually we we need a database. So we're gonna go to MongoDB Atlas, uh, Mongo Atlas, uh, and create one. Um, like I said, I've never done this successfully on stream, so we're gonna give it a try. Oh, I'll try a wrong API key. It should fail. I'll show you. So here. Something wrong. Uh, you need a date today. Unauthorized. So you have to have the correct API key. So that's good. See you later, Adam. Thanks for dropping by. Oh, and Tyler says, I have my first phone interview tomorrow for a web dev position. A little nervous. Congratulations, Tyler. Emotes in the chat for Tyler. Congrats. Um, you... Here's my advice. <laughs> you, you know what you know. You at least landed the interview, so you made it this far. So don't don't stress, right? Like either they're gonna like you or they're not gonna like you. At this point, you are what you are. You know what you know. So uh, hopefully that's encouraging. I don't know. <laughs> Hype. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Okay. Uh, let me hide my screen for a second um, while I try to log in. Um, okay, so we're here. I created an account, and now we're going to create a cluster. Uh, we want it to be a free tier cluster. We'll put it in Virginia. Though I could, let's put it in, I'm closer to Oregon. Let's put it in Oregon. Um, this is the sandbox free tier. Create that cluster. I actually do have a blue screen, yes. <laughs> All right, so uh, my cluster has been created. Um, database access. Uh, we definitely need to add a user. Um, password. Username. All right, I'm going to hide all this and create a username and password. Oh, that's, that's, that's way too much me. There's, there's less me. There we go. Um, so I need a user. I need a password. Um, and what I'm going to try to do is connect to that remote database um, right now locally just to make sure that it works. So. Okay, and uh, this user can read and write to the database, add the user. Okay. Um, I don't think my password's showing or anything like that. And hello, Quran, welcome. <laughs> uh, network access. All right, so I'm gonna hide my screen for a second. That's again, that's way, that's way too much. For me. But when you click on network access, um, you can add an IP address that is your current IP address. Let's see. Yeah. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this because I'm using a VPN, and it should allow me to access. Oh, oh no, what happened? Come back screen there. Oh, oh, buddy. Okay. <laughs> So uh, this is not my IP address, but because I'm using a VPN, but I'm whitelisting this so that way I can connect to it from my machine. Um, it's not NordVPN, no. Because <laughs> uh, the, the thing about MongoDB Atlas is by default, it's very secure. By default, nothing can connect to the database from any IP address. So right now I'm just going to allow access from this IP address and then we'll try to connect to it. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Hopefully this works, and then this could be somewhat of a tutorial for MongoDB Atlas, but we'll see. Um, so that's pending. I think someone asked something in the chat. Yes, Sultan says, coding test during interviews really stresses me out. Is it hard for me to code? Uh, it is hard for me to code for, with several people watching. Any advice? Um, honestly, no. <laughs> it's like, you you can only... Uh, just get used to it by just doing it often. I, my advice would be to try and practice with uh, coworkers or colleagues or friends um, just to get used to it because 
sadly, that's a part of a lot of people's interview process where they're basically just like watching you code. Now, some places are very constructive about it and they actually will typically like ease your, your stress or, or ease your anxiety um, because they're trying to help you. They're not just like staring at your code waiting for you to do something wrong. Um, and so that's potentially another way to help it is to like change your change your mindset, your frame of mind. Like don't think about it like they're waiting for you to do something wrong. Think about it that like they're they're there to help you and it's more of a collaborative thing than it is just watching and waiting for you to do something wrong. But I know it can be hard. Yeah. Pra practice and yeah. <laughs> Uh, hola desde Chile. Gracias por tus videos. Oh, thank you, Gerald. I actually don't speak uh, too much Spanish, but welcome to the show. Thanks for watching. And hello, Steampunk Devil. Yeah, Chris says, just do your best. It's mostly about the algorithms. If the basic gist is good and you should be fine, it depends on the company. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Thanks for the follow, Martin Martini Vodka. <laughs> hello, Alana. Welcome. Josh says they've never had... I've had problems with it before. And hello, Christian. It's been a while. Welcome. Yeah, so we made a user, we whitelisted my local IP, and yeah, I agree, rip, rip Imlab. Imlab was so easy, and MongoDB Alice is somewhat convoluted, but yeah. So uh, now is only a backend deployment service. They do not have databases at all, so you, you do need a separate database wherever you're going to deploy your backend. Unless you deploy to like AWS, and you configure your own server, and you install Mongo on that server, that's an option, but yeah, I'm not going to do that. Oh, nice. You clipped it. Very good. <laughs> Hello, Vladimir. Yeah. Okay, so we whitelisted my IP. Uh, now, let's try to connect. Um, I'm going to click this. Connect with my application. Yeah, so uh, this is giving me the connection string. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to hide my screen for a second, because it... <laughs> I keep clicking the wrong one. I'm going to hide my screen for a second, but um, that is uh, what I'm going to use in my .env. So in my .env, where I have database URL, I'm actually going to put this URL and then enter in my password that I created earlier. Like that. And we should be good. Um, but I'll at least show you the example file. Hmm. Just a second. Okay, so uh, if we're looking in the example file, right now, when we're connected locally, we just have my local MongoDB that I have running on my, on my machine. Um, but what we'll do is we'll actually replace that with the connection string that comes from MongoDB Atlas. Um, so here, you're gonna have your own username, your own password, your own host name, your own database name, and we're just, you're just gonna replace that there. Um, though I'm really only doing this to test it locally. After I know that it's working locally, I'm going to replace the local host on my local and that URL is just what I'm going to use on my deployed server. Okay, so we've set that environment variable. Now let's restart our backend and see if it works. If everything is working correctly, it should be connected to the remote database. And whenever I refresh this page, we shouldn't see anything because the database is empty. Now. We don't see any errors on the back end. Let's try to add something new. So we're going to go to Denver, Colorado. We can enter in our API key. Um, we're going to be, I'll just say, uh, Denver comments. Uh, this is a nice place to live. <laughs> and then we'll just set the date to be today, create the entry. It seemed like it worked. We'll do a refresh, and it's still there. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we are actually connected to my remote database um, on uh, Mongo on uh, MongoDB Atlas. So refresh the page over here. I believe we can like look at the connections. Yeah, look at collections. Sorry, and uh, we can see that log entries has one, which is Denver. 
cool. So uh, MongoDB Atlas is working. So now what I can do is I can use that connection string, which I know is a working connection string, and set that as a secret whenever I deploy the backend. So let's do that right now. I'm going to hide my screen yet again. <laughs> well, thank you, Ultrendo. I'm glad it, I'm glad it worked first try. <laughs> um, so, and actually, just real quick to show you how this is going to work. Um, well, Okay, here we go. I'll show you how this works. So I'm going to deploy the back end to uh, now. So if you go to now.sh or zeit.co, Z-E-I-T.co, um, that's a service where you can uh, deploy uh, backends. And that's where I'm going to deploy my back end. But I need to set a secret. And actually, I need to set up all of my environment variables or in all of my secrets so that when I deploy to now, um, it, it can talk to that database that we just created on MongoDB Atlas. So we're going to do that now. Uh, let me catch up because there, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> um, yeah, Umhex says, in regards to Sultan's question earlier, I do a lot of interviewing for my company. What we mainly look for is that somebody is talking through what they are thinking, even if they don't think get things right. Explaining what they are doing and thinking is good. Yeah, it's good. Hopefully it's not out of sync. Hopefully. Thanks for the YouTube sub, Tez. Hello, Conrad. Hello, Florin. What's up? A secret mode for ultra zoom. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna show you now. And hello, Asma. Welcome. Uh, MLab is gonna be uh, shut down soon. So like, if you use Heroku, you can still create MLab instances, but eventually everything's gonna be migrated over to MongoDB Atlas. So you kind of have to do that. And hello, Florin. Uh, I have ultra low latency turned on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we don't have to import schemas or anything. So MongoDB is actually schemaless. We're using Mongoose, which is a JavaScript library that adds schemas and validations on top of it. But by default, Mongo doesn't have any schemas. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't know why, but it, it is fast. Yeah. <laughs> Those are uh, LED oh, 100. Oh, yeah, the leaderboard. <laughs> Debersic got 100 on the leaderboard, a historic moment. That happened earlier. Yeah, I don't I do not do the C language. And hello, Katoli. Welcome. Yeah. Can I please show an example for React app for SEO? I don't really have any experience with SEO. I mainly build, like, internal applications at my work, things that aren't necessarily meant to be found by, search, by via a search engine. Some things I do, but I don't have much experience with SEO. And hello, uh, Thiago. Thiagoon. Welcome. <laughs> hello, Scientan. OK, so uh, what we need to do is I, I have the now CLI installed globally. Um, so if you type now-v, that'll tell you the version, and you'll know if you have it installed globally. So what I need to do is to set up a secret. So I'm going to do now secrets add, and then you give it a name. I'm going to call this uh, travel log db, and then you give it a value. Did I copy the right value? I did. So <laughs> um, this is not my real database connection. But as you can see, it's, it's anonymized. But this is what your command will look like. So now secrets add the name of the secret and then that very secret string that you should never show or share with anyone. Or they could potentially connect directly to your database and drop everything. So we'll have the name of the database there. All right, I'm going to hide my screen and put the real value there. <laughs> um, and then that will add the secret on now. And then once the secret's been added, we can use it in a deployment. So let me grab the real secret. <laughs> Put that there, hit enter. OK, so it says it added it, 
I got a really weird log, though. I might have needed to wrap it in single quotes. We're going to try it, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to clear the terminal, too. Um, so, um, and let me close this, all these things I have open. I added the secret. It should be on now. Now we actually want to use it. Um, so for the server, I need to create a now.json uh, file, um, which describes my application so I can deploy it. And for that, I actually built a command a while back called now config. Um, and so if you do uh, npx now config, um, it'll walk you through some questions for setting up a configuration file. So the name of this project, let's call it travel log. Um, the type of app is node express. The entry point is source, source slash index, that is correct. And yes, I'll specify an alias. There we go. And so what that command did was it generated this now.json. So um, this is great, but what we need to do is add all of our environment variables. So if we look at our, um, our sample, um, all of these variables that are set in here, we need to set in our now.json. So we can do that in the env section. So we'll have env, I'm gonna set my node env to production. So when we're in production, we shouldn't see um, stack traces or anything like that. Um, I'll set the port to 1337. Um, now is like one of the only services I know that will just listen directly on that port that you give it instead of like a, a randomized port. So we'll give it 1337. Um, we need that database URL. And this is where we can use our secret. So we'll say the environment variable we need is database URL, and the value is at travel log DB. So this part right here needs to exactly match the name of the secret that we created a minute ago. Um, and then you just put an at sign in front of it. And that tells now that it should actually read the value from that secret. So that's good to go. Um, we do need to set our cores origin. Um, I actually don't know what that's going to be yet, um, so I'm just going to guess at it. And then we do need to set our API key. And so actually our API key, I'm going to set as a secret as well. Um, so I'm going to say at travel log API key, but I need to create this. So again, I would go to my terminal. I would say now secrets add travel log API key, and then give it about a value. So in my case, I'm not going to give it a keyboard cat value. Um, I will uh, give it a more secure value. So I'm going to hide my screen while I do that. Uh, and just really quick, um, this is a nice little way to generate a random string of characters. Um, we're just in, uh, running node interactively to immediately require the crypto module, generate 32 random bytes, and send it to a hex string. So if you do that, you get like a really long string um, that's fairly random. So um, I only want this to be about that long. That, that'll be good enough. For, well, actually, the user has to type it in. So I'm not, I'm not going to make it random. <laughs> I'm going to make it memorizable. But that's a neat little trick to, to generate uh, random strings. But OK. Um, Cool. So I'm going to add that secret. Um, and I'm going to set my cores origin. And I believe that's it for environment variables. So I know you can't see my screen, but I, I have all of my environment variables set. And now we are ready to deploy. So I will show that. Here's what we do. Actually, I need to make sure that I cleared my terminal. <laughs> Doing a secret thing, yeah. OK. So we set up our now.json. We have all of the environment set in the env. We added secrets. Now I can just type now. 
and that uh, should deploy the backend. Uh, the name property is deprecated. That's fine. <laughs> uh, we're going to use my scope. No existing project. That's my project name. There it is. This is new. <laughs> I haven't seen this deployment for now with now before. And hello, Pranjal. I'm doing good. Yeah, so the core's origin is going to be where my front end is hosted, but because I hadn't deployed the front end yet, I didn't know what that was going to be, but I know what it's going to be now. <laughs> a secret garden screen. That would be cool. Yeah, I like that idea. Um, it's like a... Yeah, so <laughs> whenever I'm doing secret things. Um, okay, so it should have deployed. Let's see. That's great. And if we go to slash API slash logs... It's broken. <laughs> it can't connect to the database. So this this is this is where this is where things have gone horribly wrong. Um, let me look at just a second. Let me pull up my now dashboard. We can look at the logs. Um, yeah. Yeah, failed request, um, I'll show you here. Uh, Mongoose timeout error. So it can't connect to my backend database. Um, so that's an issue. And I think it's because the way I set up the secret, I might need to wrap it in single quotes. So let's try again. <laughs> I'm going to uh, re-add this. Well, first I'm gonna remove the secret. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. You can do now secrets remove um, travel log db. Am I sure I want to remove it? Yes, I'm removing it so I can add it again. And now I'm going to add it, but I'm going to put single quotes around the database connection string. And I think that will fix it because there's a lot of weird characters in it. So all we're going to do is just wrap that in single quotes. I think, I think that was the winner. OK. <laughs> And so now that I've updated the environment variable, I can just run now again. Uh, I'm going to do dash dash prod so it automatically adds the alias. It'll try to redeploy it. And I'll catch up on the chat. <laughs> um, yeah, someone got a 100. And hello, Elia. Welcome. Yeah, React Helmet. I've heard of React Helmet, but I've never really used it before. Uh, have I, I've only worked a little bit with PHP. Um, but let's check really quick. Did it work? Work, 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 work. Oh, no, it's not going to work. <laughs> I forgot to whitelist the IP of the deployed server. So that's one thing we need to do as well. Okay. So that's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, red chats are coming from YouTube. Purple is Twitch. Yeah. Oh, I did see the PR. I haven't, I haven't looked at it yet, though. I saw that it was open. I haven't looked at what it even did. Yeah, there's an LED command. <laughs> um, nice. Generate secure token. Thank you for the YouTube sub, Mr. Burning Butter. Is it better to work with sub-documents on Mongoose or relational tables on MySQL? Um, I wouldn't say one is better than the other. It really depends on your application. I know that if you have a really complex application, doing nested queries in Mongo isn't always fun, and nested updates isn't always fun, which is why you might use related tables. The thing is, you can actually, and what I've done before, is you use Mongo um, and don't actually store things nested, have relationships to other document stores. Now, MongoDB doesn't support that by default, but you can write your application code that um, makes sure that a foreign key ID exists in another document store. At that point, you might as well use like MySQL or something, but that's a thing. Hmm. I have not tried to set up a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, the, uh, the, <laughs> the extension I have is called uh, JSON Viewer. Yeah. Yeah, I need to whitelist the IP. We got to do that. 
I'm blocking everything except myself. <laughs> Uh, the If you do exclamation mark break, you'll get a link to it, but it's called Time Out by Dejal. Yeah. Cool, and thanks for the follow, Nick Resenua. <laughs> well, that's that's sad trombone. It's not sad trumb trumpets. <laughs> doing queries is a nightmare compared to SQL. Oh, uh, if you're doing nested queries, it is, yeah. Cool, all right, so we need to whitelist that IP. Um, let's, totally, let's do that. So we're gonna go to network access, and um, I'm going to delete the local access whitelist. And what I'm going to do actually is allow access from anywhere. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because now.sh has serverless deployments. So your backend doesn't always have the same IP address. It's unfortunate. Um, and right now, there's no way to assign a static IP to a now deployment. So you must allow entries from everywhere, which is what we're going to do. Um, but if your backend server does have a static IP address, it would make so much more sense to whitelist just the, the IP address of your backend server. But like I said, right now, um, now.sh doesn't allow us to set a static IP, so we can't do that. All right, now that we've whitelisted it, does it work? It works! <laughs> okay, that was the hardest part. Great work, everyone. Um, so now that the backend is deployed, we need to deploy the front end. Um, and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm, gonna, I'm going to... Uh, first, I'm going to build my React application. Oh, actually, no, no, no. I need to, um, in my client-side code, I need to set it up so that it points to a backend URL whenever we're uh, deployed. Yeah, so we'll do this. Window.location.hostname is equal to localhost. So this is my client. And if the host name is equal to localhost, we're going to talk to my local server. Otherwise, we're going to talk to my deployed server. So we're going to do HTTPS colon slash slash travel log API dot now dot sh. And um, now whenever I'm deployed, it'll talk to my deployed server. So um, I'm going to first build this. If you do npm run build, that's there's a built-in build script for React. Um, and there are multiple ways to deploy a React app to now. I actually, why do I, I'm happy. I'm not, cause I just, I just got my MongoDB deployment to work. That's why I'm happy. <laughs> um, and so uh, there, there are multiple ways to deploy a front end to now. Um, you can deploy a React app and use the build script, but that will actually build it on now.sh servers. You could, you can also build it ahead of time like I'm gonna do, and then just deploy uh, the static built files, which is what I will do now. Um, so here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I'm gonna go into the public folder. I'm gonna run that uh, now config command that I created. Um, the name of the project is travel log. This is just a static site. We wanna deploy this, uh, this folder and we will specify an alias. There we go. So now, this now.json that's in the public folder, um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna remove all of the builds like that. And uh, whenever you build, this file will actually be copied into the build folder. I'm just gonna copy it manually now because I created it after the build. But now we can go into the build folder and then just deploy it with now. Wait, yeah, it should be good. The thing is, by default, um, output directory. Yeah, the thing, by default, <laughs> let's, oh, did I give it, uh, let's give it the alias. Um, by default, a build with like no configuration, um, will just be a static deployment. So let's see if it worked. Yeah, it worked, cool. <laughs> so the reason that I, that I did all of, all of this weirdness is um, if you have just a folder of static files, which is what a built React app is or any other static website, um, you actually don't need a build pack if you build it ahead of time and you don't need any routes because by default, uh, now version two, if you have your config file in there, it just recognizes this as, this as a static website. Um, so now that I've done this, we are on the internet and let's try to add a new thing. Um, we're gonna go. <laughs> um, we're gonna go to, where's Area 51? 
That's in Nevada, right? Nevada? Is that right? Idaho? Where's Area 51? Uh, we're just going to add something right here. Big Smoky Valley. <laughs> so I need to enter my API key. New Mexico? Oh, New Mexico sounds right. All right, let's not do that. Um, let's get rid of that. Nobody knows. Is it New Mexico? I need to know. Where is Area 51? <laughs> Heiko, Nevada. Okay. There's Elko, Nevada. All right, I'm just going to add something right here. <laughs> I think this was Area 51. I don't really remember anything. Cool. Um, so there's that. We're going to set the uh, visit date to be, uh, I guess, today. And then we'll create the entry. It seems to work. If I refresh the page, it's still there. Great, 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 great. Now, anyone in the world, I'm going to share the link in chat. <laughs> anyone in the world can go to this website. And you should not be able to add any points on the map unless you guess my API key, um, which you shouldn't be able to. But you can at least go to it and uh, click on the items to see the places that I've been. <laughs> Um, so we did it. We deployed. We got a front end deployment. We got a back end deployment. We got our database deployed. That's great. Great, great, great. That's exciting. Uh, and let me know if it works for everyone. Hopefully it does. Let's catch up. Where are we at? Oh, a binary pro. <laughs> okay. Um... Envy says, it's the, for me, it's the other way around. SQL is a nightmare, and MongoDB is the easiest. I, I kind of, it, it depends on your structure, but I agree. If you're just using basic Mongo collections, it's so easy. Yeah. And hello, Yash. <laughs> if I don't attempt to break things. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and hello, Mr. Waffles. Welcome. Is there any way to prevent someone to install some NPM dependency in an open source project? Um, you have to, uh, you would rev reveal a, uh, a pull, re review a pull request. So uh, if you're uh, allowing people to contribute, you would want to make sure in every pull request that the package.json isn't changed or the package lock isn't changed. I think that's what you mean. Um, but basically, uh, you just, when you're reviewing pull requests, you need to make sure that those things aren't changed. Yeah. Happy chappy. Uh, Mr. Waffles got their first SSD just now? Seriously? You're missing out. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're gonna be amazed at how how fast how much faster your computer is. Oh, okay. No, no, that's new, Infy. That's totally new. Um, that because it used to it used to not do that. So that's why I created this now config command. Um, because it used to be you had to create your package.json from scratch yourself. But it looks like the latest CLI will actually ask you questions similar to the tool that I built. I think that's what we just ran into. And that's probably gonna be really confusing for everyone that's using now for the first time. Um, but I might need to do a separate stream on now because yeah, that's a thing. Thanks for the YouTube sub, Curl. Yeah, that's just the internal build name. Like when I go to my dashboard, that's the name of it. And hello, Mahidra. And thanks for the follow, Bananas Panic. And I, I miss you all as well. <laughs> I just had a lot going on, so I haven't been able to stream as often. And thanks for the follow, Diddle Slip. Bermuda Triangle. Oh, yeah, let's add something there. <laughs> let's close this. Um, I did a, a report on the Bermuda Triangle a while back. It's basically here. It's like, well, I think. Isn't it? There's like a triangle here. All right, let me add a new one. I got lost and ended up here. Oh, well. And also, this was visited on today, create entry. <laughs> and so any of you that went to the site, if you refresh the page, you should see uh, three entries on the map now. And I don't have any extra dots on the map, at least I don't see, so I haven't been hacked yet. Nobody has guessed my API key. That's good. 
Thanks for the YouTube sub, Alvaro. I hear we can deploy a Node app on now. Is it completely true? Yeah, this is this is a Node.js application. The back end is running uh, an uh, Node Express API. And so if you go to um, this URL, this is the back end. And then if you go to travel-log without dash API, this is the front end. Yeah. Hi, Go Nevada. It's in Ireland. <laughs> the moon. Roswell, Roswell, New Mexico. That makes sense. They want me to think it's in Nevada. I don't know. Homey Airport or Groom Lake named after the salt f uh, flat. Okay. <laughs> uh, I did not get rid of the source maps. Let's see. Um, look at this. Yeah, so those are there. Um, if you look in the the dev, the dev tools under static and then JS, you can see my full source code there. Yeah, unauthorized. Nice. <laughs> Hello, Diddle Slip. Uh, if you look at my last live stream, we built it. It took about four hours to build, but my live streams, there's a lot of chat interaction. It could probably be be built without talking to the chat in maybe an hour or two. Time to brute force the API key. Go for it. <laughs> That's not the key either. Uh, Clink says, so if I have a site that's built with Express and uses a templating engine, can I deploy it using now? Yeah, absolutely. So um, if you look at my application, my, uh, no, that's the front end, not the front end. If you look at my back end, uh, index.js is just an Express app. So it's bringing in middlewares, it's setting things up, and then it's listening on a port. Um, however, you could set up a view engine right here, and you could have a folder with view engines. Um, you would just need to make sure that in your deployment build configuration, it knows to load all those view folders, but it's absolutely possible. Anything that's a, a node app can be deployed to now. <laughs> Hello, Sean. Welcome. Well, thank you, Aranid. Uh, Ara Aranid? And thanks for the follow, Barcode Killer. Thanks for the follow, Joko. <laughs> yeah, somebody could brute force it if they really wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, Rand. <laughs> oh, it's gone, but yeah, somebody got 100 on the... Um, um, on the drop game. I can't get scroll left to work in React. What do you mean, like, scrolling left? Interesting. And thanks for the follow of Ataria. Oh, they found Heiko on the map. <laughs> nice. Um, the site breaks when you open the form for adding location and zooming out. Uh, let's see. So, uh, it should, it should, it does this. There's definitely some, like, small bugs we need to fix. Um, and this isn't like the best user experience. One thing that would be cool to add, I'm not gonna do it today because I'm basically done streaming, but one thing that would be cool to add is after you put your new point on the map, you can like click and drag it around to the exact location you want it to be, and then you can create it. I think I'd wanna do that in the future. But yeah. 13 characters. <laughs> Um, the API key is secret because the, the main idea with this application is this is my personal travel log and I don't want anyone else to be at it, to be able to add entries to it, just me. Um, you could take this application a step further, allow users to sign up, and then each user gets their own individual map with their own points on the map. But that's more work. That's a lot more back-end work. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, it, I'm using the Express build, tack, build Pack. So technically what this Build Pack does is it turns my Express app into a single uh, serverless function. Um, so that's what this does. And if you look at all the now docs, they actually want you to write your apps with serverless functions rather than with Express. Um, but this will basically wrap my entire app into a serverless function. And hello, Glooby. Yeah. Look at my back end. <laughs> MVC on the back end. It's cool. Um, any way of organizing your, your files on the back end is better than not organizing them. Um, I've been doing a lot of Feathers JS development lately. So instead of MVC, I've been doing uh, model, service, and hooks. But then I have helpers, which automatically create services. So I don't really even need this service file. But yeah. <laughs> Working on. OK, let us know. Uh, once you've brute forced it, then um, 
<laughs> then add a bunch of points on the map. But be nice. Don't add any weird images or anything like that. Um, but also, I could add a, a rate limit to the back end to prevent you from doing that. And I could ban your IP address. I'm not going to do any of that because that's not what this stream is about. Uh, we put it on the internet. Great work, everyone. Great work. Hello, solo developer. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people watching. It's a shame that I have to get back to work. And thanks for the follow, Gis the Key. Um, Yash is asking, do I know how to go about contributing to an open source project? I have just the video for you. Uh, if you go to coding.garden slash videos, you can see all of my uh, live streams. Uh, and if you search for open source, uh, I have this video, how to contribute to open source projects. Um, the first hour is just me just explaining how it all works and how you can get involved. And then the next hour and 48 minutes is me trying to fix a really hard bug for a, an issue that had been open for a really long time. So this, this isn't the best video to see how to like just fix something instantly um, because um, the main point of that video was to show you what it, what, what it means to contribute to open source and what all these things are. Um, and because I know a lot about React for that particular one, I picked a, an issue that had been open for a really long time and nobody else had solved it before, which is why it took me a long time. But if you look at that, it's all about how to contribute. Uh, do I want to finish the web app started at the coding train? Uh, I've created a part two. So if you search again on coding.garden slash videos, if you search for um, meow, with, yeah, <laughs> uh, full stack Twitter clone part two. Um, so this is the, the part two of the app that I built on the coding train a while back. Uh, we added pagination, infinite scroll, and like a few other things as well. But um, if you go to this site, you can search through all my videos. Pew. And thanks for the YouTube sub, uh, Aorind. Aorind? <laughs> well, thank you, Manish. Much, much appreciated. Not found. <laughs> nice. You tried to request my .env. Sick. <laughs> That's actually hilarious. I never, I never tried that before. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, now we'll look at like my git ignore or something like that, or it might just ignore it uh, by default. Yeah. <laughs> uh. It's good. We, we deployed. We're there. If you go to travel-log.now.sh, um, <laughs> you can view my travel log. And until someone brute forces it, uh, you, you won't be able to um, uh, add anything because there, there's a special API key. <laughs> Partially true to build a node app on now. And it's not necessarily hacking. It's just a, a build pack that they created to bundle up an Express app to be a um, serverless function. <laughs> yeah, you, you could potentially, uh, yeah, Zite might ban you. I don't know if they do any rate limiting, but that's a possibility. Uh, we, we did that last time. <laughs> so when you're in production, we don't want to leak the stack trace. So we show an emoji, oh, sorry, we show a pancake stack. Well, thank you, Clink. Well, thank you, Gets the Key. <laughs> P5 Editor PR Part 2. We sh I should do that for sure. Hello, Acid Spark. Happy birthday! <laughs> uh, yeah, I gotta go. I, I just did this stream on my lunch break, but I gotta get back to work. But happy birthday. Hopefully your birthday is going well. Um, I would say you didn't get 100, but uh, Debursic got 100 on the leaderboard. So it's a historic moment for Coding Garden, and it's your birthday. So I think that that's a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, GameStep says, how would you ban an IP that makes more than 30 requests per minute? Um, there are quite a few middlewares that will do it. Um, if you look at my Meower uh, application, this is the one that I built on Coding Train. And if you look at it, I actually set up uh, rate limiting. So I'm using Express Rate Limit. And by default, this just uses an in-memory store, meaning it's not storing the IP addresses in a database. It's just storing them in memory. And if it, if it detects more requests than you allow it, um, it will block that request. So right here, I'm using the rate limit. Um, and I only allow one post request every 30 seconds per IP address. Um, and so that's basically how I do it. I could technically add it right now, but I got to go. <laughs> I, might, I might do it after I stop streaming. <laughs> uh, but here, let me, I'll, I'll link you to this so you can see how to do it. And like I said, there are, there are other packages out there. 
And then there are um, other packages that can store banned users in a database or in a Redis store and stuff like that. Um, right now, it's just banning by IP address. How should we find open source projects? Um, I talk about it in that video, so check it out. And happy birthday, Acid Spark. Happy, happy birthday. <laughs> That's good. Uh, so the this project was created uh, last stream. So if you look at my YouTube channel, the stream before this is where we created it. And then I just want to do a quick stream to deploy it today. But that's it. And thanks for the follow, uh, Marukus Jim. And thanks for the follow, uh, Comrade Dingo. Comrade uh, Comrade Dingo. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, I don't I don't have a static serve set up on my back end, so it can't request any of the static files. Did I just pronounce it? <laughs> Zeit. Yeah, I, I got in the habit of uh, pronouncing it correctly. Code Codas this week. I, I need to finish that one cue that we never finished. So maybe. Maybe uh, tomorrow. We'll see, though. Yeah. OS level filters. I be, yeah, so you could do that at the... In, in the case of now, you're not in control of the Linux server, so you can't really use fail to band, but on other things you could. Uh, yeah, so if you, if you search my channel for uh, full stack authentication... Or if you search for noob quest authentication, you should find some videos on it. User auth, yeah. Auth for noobs. Yeah, it's called auth for noobs, I think. I gotta go. <laughs> off off from scratch. Yeah, let, let me find it really quick. <laughs> um let's just look on this site. Noob quest auth from scratch. Yeah, so this is a, a five-part video series where I pair with a complete and total code noob to teach him about all the the, the concepts in authentication. Um, it's pretty long, and there are a lot of videos, but we we do go fairly into depth on everything and answer like every every single question that we can. There's also this video or this series, Node Express Postgres auth, that um, is a bit shorter, and it's just me teaching about the things. Oh yeah, six parts. Cause uh, part six uh, is where I, team I paired up with a different noob and we refactored it to make it more like production, re um, production ready. Yeah, cool. All right, I gotta go. Thanks everyone for hanging out with us. And um, uh, can I get a thumbs up in the chat if you at least tried the website? Like, does it work? Is it good? Type one in the chat if it works. <laughs> if you can see my deployed map. Nice, nice. Look at that. <laughs> cool. All right, let's uh, let's find somebody to raid on Twitch. Look at all those ones. Uh, let's see who's streaming. Instafluff is still live. What? <laughs> I bet I bet he's gonna end soon though, isn't he? Oh, they're playing Stardew. Yeah, let's raid Instafluff. <laughs> Um, yeah. I anybody that was watching and stuff, does, does it seem like he's going to end soon or is he still playing Stardew, Stardew Valley? Oh, I didn't mean to link myself on Twitch, <laughs> but if you're watching on YouTube, head over to Twitch and we're going to, we're going to raid and stuff channel. Um, oh yeah. And then what's our raid message? Let's do it. There we go. Copy and paste that raid message. We're going to send that message when we go over to InstaFluff to raid. Um, okay, I think that's it. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with us. Um, this was fun. I'll see you soon. I might do a stream tomorrow. I would say definitely look forward to a Sunday stream. Um, I'm going to do another hardware stream, and I have some new goodies to play with. Not this, but other new goodies. So I think uh, Sunday we're going to do a hardware stream. We'll do, like, pixel stuff. So yeah. Alrighty, let's do the raid. There we go. <laughs> and copy that raid message. Uh, so yeah, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this. Mm -hmm.